Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Giga Hub Weekly Show. You thought we were gone, but we're back talking about things that matter to right. us, <laughs> but may not matter to you. I am host, special edition, holographic, foil cover, one of three, Luis De La Torre. <laughs> I am Adam Kren. I'm Daikaiju Tony. Yeah. Uh, let's get a few uh, announcements out of the way before we start with anything. Right. Number one, uh, guys, you need to stop calling the store we are out of outlaw energy <laughs> it is over it is done, done. we have no yeah, more no more it's please true. stop calling we don't have it anymore it's gone right, it's right. gone uh second thing on the list is uh it i hope he doesn't mind me saying it was tony's birthday that's right not that long ago like a week happy ago birthday, happy tony, birthday yeah. tony the guys you might not be able to tell because yeah, he's a pretty good looking guy right, tony is 46 wow yeah yeah, look at look at that. Just, look at that like, baby face. Look smooth... at that baby face yeah, wow. at 46. Ah, I wish wow. I looked like you at 46. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but this is what I look like at 36. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, it's all downhill from here. I'm like Ralph Macchio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Um, before we go on any further, last last bit of business, yep. uh, of course, is our sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the mm-hmm. jewel of the Mojave Desert. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm so yeah. glad to be back here, guys. Yeah. Um... Little spring we, break. Yeah, we are your one-stop shop for comics, uh, shirts, toys, posters, back issues, new issues, trades of all kinds. Uh, we have everything here plethora that you might want. Of pop culture, pop culture plethora, and reading and everything else you can think of. <laughs> exactly. Uh, why don't we show off some of what what we've got, guys? Who wants to go first? I will start off the latest issue of Keanu Reeves' smash hit comic. Berserker, oh, yeah. issue three. It's a Keanu Reeves special, guys. We also have Venom, 200th issue, issue 35, the last Venom comic in the current run. Yep. Will Venom be back? <gasps> Probably. I mean, it's very likely. They don't go away for very <laughs> yeah. long, do they? Yeah. The smash hit image comic, which it is very good, is Geiger. Very good mm. comic. Takes place right here in Boulder City in Las Vegas. What? Yeah. This is a nice. reprint. This is a second printing or third printing fourth. of fourth printing of issue number one. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Look good comic, there. actually. Really good. Okay. Um, good. I got some stuff. So now that we're sort of lax, a little more lax on being able to get together, I know a lot of D&D groups are right. starting to get back up again, guys. If you need accessories, you can come down here. We have That's everything true. in Cosmic Comics. They have dice. Look at these these miniatures. You don't want to paint miniatures? I have miniatures yeah. I have not painted. I could just buy these guys these, right they, here. And they look good, and they have, there's I mean, a they good look, price point, too. Yeah, yeah, look at these ones. Village Raiders. Lazy. They got yeah, goblins orcs, and orcs and, goblins, and stuff. Yeah. And then, like, you need an adventure to run on your way back? How about a Goodman Games old school D and D special? Expedition this is to the Barrier Peaks. Yeah, this is uh, book number three. There is um, there's the first one, Into the Borderlands, which yep. I have, and yeah, then that. Isle of Dread, which I also have. Yep. Uh, and this is the third one in the series. There's more than this, but we have there's all Castle this. Castle Amber, yeah. There's yeah. The new one coming out is uh, Temple of Elemental Evil, which is apparently a double. Yeah, and all this stuff is uh, yep. has is converted to 5.0, yep. or 5th five, edition, five, yep. edition. So you can run it as an old school game. You can run it as a 5th right. edition game. Uh, so you have all these beautiful accessories here for you to run your D&D game. Yep. And just no outline energy, as well unfortunately. As Blades in the Dark and Band of Blades. and uh, Yeah, Scum as well as other RPGs. And, yeah. yeah, there's Star Wars over there. Kids uh, on Bikes. And yeah. Star Wars, Star Trek. Come on down, get your D&D yeah. stuff, or get a new game. Get a new game to play. What do you got? What do you got over there, Tony? What do you got? Oh, what I got um, is a diamond PVC figure of King Ghidorah from Gaza vs. King Ghidorah, 1991. A same one. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that sucker. It looks like the two heads are arguing with the other head about leaving its (laughs) towels on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Guys, come on, fellas. It's just one time. This is a beautifully painted figure. It's gorgeous, yeah. It's big, yeah. It's nice. Sculpt is amazing. Yeah, it's nice. It's one of the gallery figure lines. Although I don't know if they call that one a gallery, but the gallery figure line is just really good figures at a really good price. Yeah, um, yeah, and they're durable. They're not. Oh yeah, it's this the, thing's kind of heavy. Yeah, it's I'm worried f- that Tony's gonna drop it, but I feel like nothing yeah. bad's gonna happen. Yeah, so it's, it's fine. not. It's not like the old ceramic ones. They're they're just really nice looking, and they're PVC. Yeah, so they're really nice. So yeah. they're they're you know you got some kids there that take a beating. Of, yeah, we got a wide selection of them too. Yeah, it's that's not just, just the get, latest. Yeah, yeah it's just not Godzilla. There's like there's superheroes. There's some TV show ones over there. There's some video game ones over there. There's like I said, Koras over there. Yeah. yeah, like I said, we got it yeah. all here. Raiden. 
come on down. Come get on yourself down. something nice. Get someone something nice. Yeah. Or both. Treat, your, treat yourself. Treat yourself at Cosmic Comics. That's right. That yeah. should be the tagline. Cosmic Comics. Treat, treat yourself. yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got your fix. All right. Yeah, all right. It is good to be back, everyone. Let's talk a little bit about what we know. And what we know <laughs> is movies, apparently. Yes. <laughs> yes Seems to be a lot of topics of our yep. discussion, which is fine with me. Uh, specifically, movies that came out in what is considered one of the best years for cinema, which is the year 1982. Which... Did unfortunately, 1982. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Which unfortunately is two years before I was born. For, so <laughs> for a split second, I thought you said 92. I'm like 1992. Yeah, uh, no, 19, 1982. 1982. This this subject has been talked about has been talked about on several podcasts, but not so widely that I think it's a dead, you know, like a dead subject. Like we're not beating a dead horse. Sure. And 1982 was a huge year for cinema. Some say the greatest year of going to the movies ever. And why do you guys think that is? Now, to be fair, I mean, like uh, like Louis said, he wasn't even born yet. Um, Anthony, Tony, you weren't born yet. I was actually alive at the time. Uh, we <gasps> were, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Um, oh, wait, you're 40-something. Yeah, you were alive. Tony was there. Yeah, Tony <laughs> was there. Tony's 46. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's widely considered, like, one of the greatest years in cinema, and we're going to prove that by the simple fact that both of you know a lot of the big movies that came out the year because they're still considered great movies. They're still considered right? classic yeah. movies, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, how do you want to get into this? Let's. Do you want me to just start off hitting with some of the movies that came out that year, and we can kind of go from there, touch on sure. some a little sure, bit? Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. So, some of the most popular movies that came out that year: um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Blade Runner, oh. the. Th- the Thing, Ooh, mm. yeah, E.T., the, thing. the Extraterrestrial, First Blood, the original Rambo, oh, yeah. which is actually a very good movie, much better than the sequels. Yeah. Um, Conan and the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Poltergeist. The first one. Poltergeist, Officer and a Gentleman. Um, now, some of these were big then. They just didn't make it out of the 80s too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sophie's Choice, which kind of put, uh, put what's her name on the map, whose name is now escaping me, Meryl Streep. Um, Diner, which was a big movie back then. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan came out that year. Oh, yeah. Tron came out that year. Mm-hmm. Um, the King of Comedy, which the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix is famously based off of, <laughs> came out that year. Mm-hmm. Um, Gandhi, which, again, doesn't, didn't make it out of the 80s, it's but that movie very, was huge I think it's one the of those 80s. very artsy films that's like too artsy for you right. to talk oh, about, you know what Gandhi I mean? Movie? Yeah, Gandhi, yeah. Um, which was how Ben Kingsley got a start. He's because of that movie is why he's been in movies since. Oh. He uh, wasn't known for anything before that. Um, the Dark Crystal came out that year. I Rocky love the Three Dark came Crystal. out that year. Pink Floyd: The Wall came out that year. Creep Show came oh, out yep. that year. Yeah, I love Creep Show. Um, the Beastmaster with Mark Singer came oh, out. Oh, I love Beastmaster. Uh, the Secret of Nim came out that oh, year. Oh my gosh. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, tr- I'm trying to stick to things you guys would know now. Um, some of these movies were big when I came out, but like I said, they just didn't really make it out. Airplane 2 came out, um, Best Little Horse in Texas, Friday the 13th Part 3, which if you're a Friday the 13th fan, you know that's sort of like the definitive Friday the 13th. Not because it's good. Yeah. It's the one where Jason finally but it dons, become, uh, But that's when mask. Jason becomes Jason. Yep. And the kills are actually really good. Yep. Um, and, it's, and it was originally in 3D. Um, yep. Yeah. Crazy <laughs> stuff. Uh, Mad Max what's 2. some other ones, yeah. The um, Road Warrior came out in 82. No, no, that was 81, I believe. Um, we're going to get to that, sure? though. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, now, it may have came out in 82 here. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, so those are just, those are some of the movies. There was a lot of big movies that did a lot of big money that year. Um, so, I... I <laughs> and you have to think about sort of like the, uh, put to put it into terms of sort of... Um, um, Zeitgeist, like the spirit of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, in late 1981, I mean, in eight, 1981, you had movies Raiders of the Lost Ark, American Warfare in London, Escape from New York, oh, The Evil yeah. Dead came out, mm-hmm. Stripes, Excalibur, uh, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, which was just called The Road Warrior in the U.S., came out, um, Heavy Metal came out, uh, the original Class of the Titans came out, Scanners came out, Time Bandits came out, also a big year for movies, right? And then the year after, in 1983, Scarface, <laughs> um, the original Vacation, yep. Return of the Jedi, Christine, Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and uh, Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. uh, Flashdance, Risky Business, uh, War Games. You know, it was just, 
I mean, it was cavalcade just, of different movies. It was I, just a very mm-hmm. great time to be a moviegoer. So I, while I don't think I can pinpoint the exact reason why these those three years exactly are the best right. year cinema wise, right. I can say at the very least that it, in the eighties it just seemed like they were taking a lot more risks making yep. movies. Like they were more varied in the things that they did and, as opposed to now. And you know why some of that? Which what, is why what, we have a ninth Fast and the Furious movie. Right. right. I, a big reason for that is uh, the guys who were in charge of the studios at the time. It wasn't really the old guard, which mm-hmm. they were sort of willing to take risks, but a lot of the people that were in charge were also, like, they were former actors themselves. So mm-hmm. they were in the industry. Alan Ladd famously uh, greenlighted a lot of 20th Century Fox movies during the 80s, things like that. Alan Ladd was an actor. Shane, I don't know if you ever saw Shane. Shane, oh, you know, mm. that classic Western, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot going on. <laughs> a was lot he, going on. Was he the on. kid yelling Shane? <laughs> no, he was Shane. Yeah. Oh, he was Shane. <laughs> he was Shane. I thought he was the kid it, yelling. Like, like kid yelling what, Shane did like, good. Logan is partially based on. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Halloween three spirit uh, season of the witch also came out. In Halloween YouTube, three. That's right. Halloween which is three like also the came most out. Yeah. Which again, there's that risk thing because yeah, it, was, it had nothing yeah. to do with Halloween. Well, remember, and just to touch on that really quick. Halloween 3, I didn't even go to the next page, so yeah, I hadn't even got down to Halloween 3 yet. Um, Halloween, when John Carpenter originally made Halloween, Mm. his goal, his idea was to make every Halloween movie a different horror movie. Right. Um, uh, He wanted it not to have to do with Michael Myers. The next one probably would have been The Fog, is what The Fog turned out to be. Um, and then Halloween 3, of course, and then on and on and on. But, of course, you know, the studios kept backing up a dunk truck full of money in his lap. Well, probably not that much. But, <laughs> you know, he got paid. So, you know, he owned the rights to it. So they wanted to make more. He let him make more. That's mm-hmm. why he wasn't involved as much. Um, Night Shift came out that year, which that movie's forgotten about now, but that's really where Michael Keaton started. That was like his breakout role. I had never seen Night Shift. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Well, I, I used to love it as a teenager. I haven't seen it since then. I'm afraid to watch oh, it. Oh, so. it's one of those things. I'd just uh, rather keep it alive in my memory. Right, right exactly. I'd rather keep it alive in my, in my memory. Sword and the Sorcerer came out that year. Yeah, there you go. Halloween 3. Um, what are some other ones that have survived? Basket Case, Classic oh. Horror. Yeah, yeah, you know. Basket's awesome. Yeah. Um, Death Wish 2, Alone in the Dark. Some of these are sort of forgotten about. Beast Within. I don't know if that one's made it out of the 80s. That was a classic horror movie. Megaforce came out. Megaforce. <laughs> 1982. I love Me- Megaforce. It's so it's bad. It's such a bad it's movie. It's great. Wait, what? Yeah. Megaforce? You never I, saw I Megaforce? Never it. it sounds cool. It's got, what's his name? What's the guy's name? Barry Bostwick. Barry Bostwick, yeah. who, was, who I first knew as the mayor from... Um, Oh yeah. What was that show he was on with Spin uh, City? Spin City. Yeah. That's where I knew him from Spin yeah. City. And then I saw him in he that movie. Brad That's and, the game. Spin City. Yeah, he was Brad in uh Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Wait, he's in he's in this what's what's the movie called? Mega Mega Force. Force. Oh. It's like it's like a I oh god, what's the best way I can describe that movie? Like American <laughs> Sentai kind of like Yeah, you know, it was made by um Hal Needham, who is Burt Reynolds' buddy. He was a stuntman turned director. And he wanted to make a big action movie for kids, kind of. It was right. kind of targeted for kids. And we love and, it as adults. And it's just, it's bad. And, but it's like, it's kind of goofy and fun at the same time, but it is bad. It's mm. cheesy. And like, they look like this. Whoever he hired to do the costumes clearly came from Broadway. Because it's like the costumes are kind of yeah, flashy. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, like, like, yeah. like the guy, like the... Well, and it was filmed uh, actually right out there, out, outside um, of Anderson on the other side of What's his name? Black like, had, like, headbands yeah. and, like, shiny suits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, It looked like... Like LeMay suits, Z- suits, It looked yeah. like Xanadu in the desert is what it looked like. <laughs> right, um, right, right. But it's yeah. such a great movie. Yeah, it was it's, filmed right back there. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. such a fun, cheesy movie. It really is. I, I do recommend that for anybody who just wants to kind of have a laugh. Honestly, I think it's some of Barry Boswick's best work have you ever seen the just not too far off topic because it's still regarding an 82 movie um he did a thing for a kickstarter where he's trying to do a movie and he's kind of making fun of himself where he's like i'm barry boswick you may know me and he like names off all these things he's done like you know tony award winning this and you know academy nominated this that all these things and he goes (laughs) and he's kind of laughing and kind of you can tell he's kind of and he goes so if you give to this kickstarter he goes you'll get a signed picture of me as ace hunter from Mega Force. Oh. Limited edition. I only have a few hundred laying around my garage, so make sure you 
<laughs> it's pretty funny, yeah. Ah, da- funny. I wish I didn't miss. I would have paid money for a picture. <laughs> right. Um, right. Is it the goofy people one? seem to know more it, for that than anything else. Is it the goofy picture where he's kind of like, he, I, 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 I don't he, remember. He's got he's like a weird male there. model face where he's just kind of yeah. like. Maybe, I don't he's know. He's like on his motorcycle. Ah, oh, it's weird. It's right. great. So Such 1982, right? Mm. Um, so, I mean, you guys, you guys can give a drastically different. Like, I could go on and on about some of these movies that you guys probably are just like, yeah, I've never seen that. So, um, like, a lot of the movies that. So, what are the ones that stand out to you? Like, what are the ones that you've clearly have seen and are still in your public consciousness? The thing. Uh, there's the a few. Thing, the, yeah. the Thing was uh, such a great movie. Right. I remember seeing and it. it. Flopped. It That's flopped. crazy. And that is though? crazy. The original, so the, good. The, original, the guy who wrote the book like dismissed it, or it was no, a, it was no, the director, director of the, of the original, uh, he, or he, the producer. He, produ- yeah, he dismissed. Yeah, Carpenter's it's version. it's honestly one of my favorite Kurt Russell. It's my absolute favorite Kurt yeah. Russell it's movie. It's my favorite John Carpenter movie. Yeah. And then like yeah, Keith David's in it. Come yeah. on, yeah, right? Yeah, Keith yep. David's the best. Yeah. I, I hashtag Keith David and everything. Yeah. Um, Yep. So, like, a lot of these movies, obviously, I, I wasn't around for when they were in theaters. But when I was a kid, one of the things we used to do uh, was we would go to the video store a lot. And that's where I would pick out a lot of these movies. One of right. the ones that sticks out in my mind the most is The Dark Crystal. Right. Um, Such a great, unique film. Like, it's just it, so different. It, yeah. it is. Like, you watch it, and it is, like, a very friendly... Like, I'm not, I don't need to describe, I'm sure, The Dark Crystal to people. But, like, yeah, watching yeah. it as a kid, it's like... You know, Jim Henson, it's puppets, and it, it's really great. And then you start seeing, like, the more monstrous creatures. You start seeing, like, the Skeksis and stuff. And they're kind of, they're freaky looking, like. I yeah. can't do it. But I, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The Chamberlain. I feel like the 80s were, like, a time of sort of reckless abandon for whatever your children were watching. <laughs> I feel like a lot of stuff that was relevant then would by today's standards be maybe too scary or too like a lot yeah and a lot of people and the reason why like the secret in him that movie's scary that movie is is creepy yeah creepy but um i think if you go back and and you guys may have read this too i mean it all started with star wars i mean star wars actually jaws and star wars i mean both of those guys defined a lot of these movies that came out um you know Jaws because it was a it's like the first summer blockbuster, but Star Wars because it it kind of like really broke the mold and how effects were done, mm-hmm. and it, it just created this renaissance of special effects, right. yep. which is why a lot of these movies got made. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I yeah. think Kroll is in there somewhere too, oh, which is my wait, personal. Wait, favorite. Kroll came out in eighty two. I don't know if that was eighty two, but I can find out real quick. But um, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Age of practical effects. I think that's what made it. I, that's yeah, what it was make, like a renaissance of practical effects. Like that's what makes something like the thing so creepy. Like besides its sort of like undertone of which one of us oh, could Crow be infected or which one of us is. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. there's of course then of course the the body transformation right. horror right. like Aspect, uh, yeah. yeah like I don't know. I think that has to do a lot with a lot of it too. Like it visually, yeah, it's striking. Mm-hmm. You know, like you could you could. Watch a movie with a with a computer generated monster, and it won't have the same effect as like something with a practical. Effect. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, at that point, you know, and I remember that was a big thing. It's like you would look at it, and you're just like, "That's there, like it's there in front of them." Yeah, <laughs> like it's yep. <laughs> like what the heck? And it's all, of course, you when you study it, you realize a lot of it's quick cuts and different angles and things to help sell the effect, but it's still there. It's there, know? and it, it makes yeah. it creepier. Yeah, it gives it like a weight. Yeah, as opposed to just sort of looking fake um, or Blade not, Runner not looking real. Oh, yeah. yeah, Blade Runner. One now my personal favorite sci-fi yeah. movie. Now Blade ever. Runner, I actually was lucky enough to see in theaters. Whoa. Oh, nice. Um, the thing I did not see in theaters, I wish. I um, saw in the Blade Runner. I saw in theaters at the Huntridge, believe it or not, back when it was a theater. Oh, it was back in the day. It's when they first. I want to say they the Huntridge used to be one theater, mm-hmm. and then that was right when they split it to two theaters, and the, and Blade Runner was one of the movies playing. I remember I saw it there. Yeah. And I freaking loved it. That movie flopped too, believe it or not. Oh yeah. no! Right, Which is probably yeah. the reason why it took thirty years to make a sequel. Right, right. Um, like it needed one. I was, I was very mad about the sequel. It's not that it was a bad sequel. I love the sequel. It's mm. like as a sequel, it's like no, everything makes sense. It's a good idea for a sequel because it's, it's not trying to do the same thing over. Mm. Yep. But at the same time, I was like, it seemed kind of necessary. <laughs> it's kind of like John Wick too. Like, why? I mean, like the first is such a well-rounded, perfect. <laughs> yeah, film. Like you don't I need don't, you. don't need don't more yeah, of it. Yeah. Know, yeah. Blade Runner twenty four night. In terms of like yeah. its visuals, like it kind of unleashed a wave of a new appreciation for cyberpunk 
uh, that's stuff. Fair. Like, yeah, that's like fair. Even, even even Cyberpunk 2077, even though the game's unplayable, like a lot of it took influence. Are from, you still having issues with it? Uh, yeah, on oh, wow. PS5. Oh, wow. okay. A lot of it took inf- um, inspiration from the Blade Runner movies. Uh, yeah, that's true. All right, so the thing can ET, I, can, which can I tell you? No, please didn't go age on. as well. No, yeah, I. You know what? I was never a big fan it. of ET, even oh, as a kid. Yeah. I liked it when I saw it. I, I uh, just but then I, on cable, I was just kind of like, eh. I wasn't a fan, and the reason why is because I was, I was a little kid when I saw it. Yeah. So I was expecting to see more of ET. Yeah. And like when I saw how yeah. serious it was, I was like, ah. but then you watch like Mac and Me, which is like. <laughs> Which is all the camp I would have wanted as a kid, yeah, but yeah. It, but then it's like, oh, maybe a happy medium. Maybe they don't have to be one or the other. One's very too serious. The Mac other one is like too much, Mac. too much Mac. Mac and family. Or yeah. Whatever. Um, you know <laughs> what? You know what? Special effects blew my mind as a kid. Uh, Tron. Tron. The special effects from Tron as a kid blew my mind. I had no idea what was going on when I watched it or what was happening, yeah. but man, did it look cool. Um, I guess you blew my mind. Legacy. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're talking about good movies, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, Et. Of course, I think I don't know how you guys felt about the special edition, but I think. Oh wait. I think what ru- it kind of. I don't think the where movie, they changed the guns to fight. Yeah. yeah. First wait. of all, I don't think the movie aged well. To be honest, they right. changed the guns it, it, to radios, it really is like, like weirdly, weirdly, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which was seventy eight, seventy nine. Mm. Yeah. I think that movie aged okay. Because it's it's it sort of captures its time in a way, but it does so in a more almost uh, objective manner. Where uh-huh. ET captures its time in a much more subjective manner, right. which I, I don't think that's. I think that's why it didn't age as well. And then of course the special edition, I think, kind of ruined it. So too. what was <laughs> okay? So what was the other changes aside changing the guns to radios? Mostly that was it. I don't even remember anymore. I know it was a big deal when it came yeah. out, but I don't remember. <laughs> I would have loved this scene where. Like if there's an original scene where they shot the guns and then they replaced the guns with the walkie-talkie, but they didn't take the scene out, so they're shooting at him with like walkie-talkies. That would have been funny. Um, yeah, like like I said, like honestly, I didn't really care for the changes because I yeah. I didn't really even care for the movie. Even notice. as I grew older, I was yeah. just like, meh. It was a big movie at the time, though. It was a big movie oh, at yeah. the time, and honestly, like even it was now, the it's nicer, like a, it, nicer version of the thing where they're both alien invasion <laughs> movies, but one is nice and one's I mean, we not don't nice. know. We don't know that. We don't know that E.T. is nice. That's that's true. Yeah. That he could have like, just been calling, like, oh, no, I'm an ice alien, so take me back to my people. And they go in and get oh. him. They're like, oh, okay, great. Let's take this place over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I would watch that sequel now. Yeah. I think. I like how Robot Chicken took it. In Robot Chicken, all the other aliens were a lot smaller, uh, smarter and taller than him. And they were able to light up all the fingers. <laughs> that's and, right. <laughs> and E.T. just, like, flipped him off while lighting his finger. So First Blood came out that year, which I don't know if you guys Joe. are too familiar with First Blood. Oh, I, I mean, you guys know who Rambo is. Yeah, so yeah. But First Blood is actually a very serious movie about yeah. sort of the horrors of war. Right. And, and, how, PTSD. and how shitty people, excuse me. Crappy people can escalate, let mm-hmm. things because even Ram- even John Rambo is as guilty as that sheriff. Mm-hmm. He makes some bad choices, yeah, yeah, because he's angry, right? You know, like, and, and the uh, only person he kills was unintentional. Well, it was by accident, kind of unintentional, yes. Yeah. So, the, my first Compared experience with, with like on a rampage, with yeah. Rambo yeah. was the cartoon. <laughs> oh, god, <laughs> like, I like. Rambo is one of those names where you just knew who Rambo was, right? right? Like, you don't have to watch the movie to know. It was one of, like, those pop culture yeah, things yeah. where everyone knows who Rambo is. You don't have to know. You don't have to know the first movie. First Blood is a great flick, yeah. Yeah, so I, when I first... I can't say the same for the other. ...watched anything about John Rambo was the cartoon. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up watching the actual movie. Yeah, First later. Blood and I. Uh, yeah. I was like, I was pleasantly surprised because the cartoon is the cartoon is stupid, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was a kid <laughs> and I watched, I watched dumb crap. But like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, not as bad as any other series in the '80s, right. like a cartoon that was made from a movie, uh, R-rated movie, an R-rated, uh, an R-rated, <laughs> yeah. So like, so when I so when I watched, so when I watched like first blood i'm like ooh, this isn't fun or whimsical at all <laughs> yeah. it was like a water it was the it was what GoBots was to to, to transformers <laughs> rambo was to gi joe right yeah which is like a watered down lame lamer version of gi joe yeah, yeah um and the movie is serious. and the movie yeah is deadly se- i was yeah. expecting to have like some cool action like fun and i'm like oh this no. is not very nice that's a great movie <laughs> yeah. but holy crap um, this is not what i was expecting right. my introduction to rambo was the fourth movie which i liked as an action movie even though it gets 
overly grim at times because I don't think I saw that one. Oh, it's the one where in the beginning they show real life footage of people getting killed and oh joy. <laughs> and in that movie, like even little kids get shot and blown up. Oh yeah yeah. And but like the finale, it's Rambo in a turret, um, and it's really graphic. And <laughs> I went back, saw the first movie. Okay, I like it. I like it almost actually. I like the first movie, my favorite. Second's the fourth one. Then I saw two and three. I'm like, uh, and uh, when I see two and three, I'm like, okay, some tonal shift definitely happened. Oh, they're very, yeah, they're very propaganda. <laughs> America, America, it's it's definitely inspired uh, t- uh, Team America. Oh, pff, yeah. Uh, first Blood, though. If if you're at all interested and you don't care for Rambo, at least see First Blood because it really is about what how war can just f people up. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Um, of course, Conan the Barbarian came out that year. Crush your enemies. Uh, See them dreaming for you. No. And hear the lamentation of the women. Oh, the as, women. A, as a fan of of of, of, of um, literary Conan, I can honestly say that the Conan the Barbarian uh-huh. is a terrible Conan film. <laughs> it adaptation. really is. As an adaptation? Oh. As an adaptation, yes. I um, like Batman 89. It's a ter- yeah, it's a terrible Conan film. Yeah. However, it is a great sword and sorcery film. Yeah, um, which which the eighties was abundant with right, apparently. Right, right. Yeah. Well, after this, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's it's not a good Conan Has, story. Like, one of the best soundtracks like, ever. I remember I have it. Yeah, it's got a great soundtrack. I mean, just think about it. Without that movie, we probably wouldn't have like Hawk the Slayer that's or right. Crawl or that's, or. or Barbarians, the twins. <laughs> oh, Barbarian Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the uh, twin Barbarians Death movie. Deathstalker. Deathstalker. Uh, Ator, the Fighting Eagle. <laughs> Beastmaster. Well, that came out the same year, so yeah. I guess that was probably in the works. I but, loved um, Beastmaster. Yeah, Beastmaster was cool. I got really sad when I figured out that his his like panther was like a tiger that was painted black. <laughs> it died black. What the hell? I'm um, like, that's not cool. What the hell? Um, the, biggest, the biggest difference with Conan, which I have actually gotten discussions about this, is it's called Conan the Barbarian, but he's not a barbarian at all. Mm. He is literally, standpoint. he's from a technical standpoint, he's not a barbarian. He is literally captured, enslaved, mm. and then taught everything he knows. Right. <laughs> that is not a barbarian. I mean, he was like uh, a sailor any, for a yeah. long time, a sailor and like a thief, right? Uh, like he was, yeah, well, yeah. The, yeah, the whole idea is when he was, I want to say it was when he was 15 or so, he got captured and he was a slave for two weeks and he basically said, F this, I'm out. <laughs> and um, he escaped and then he traveled uh, south. Mm-hmm. And then he just that's he started as a thief, and then he just yeah he was captains, of various guards and different things, and yeah he did all sorts of stuff. He was a pirate for a long time. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot of things. But. James Earl Jones, uh, Jones is um, oh, he's great. Who, who, who Tulsa, did he play? Tulsa Doom. He's Tulsa actually Doom. a King Cole villain. Yeah, he's not an actual not Conan a, villain from the book. Man, he he, he looked, was great. He looked goofy with that hair though. He was great. <laughs> oh, yeah. hair Honestly, he was goofy. great. He was great without me. Yeah, my son. My son. I'm yeah. like, dang, he said that before Star Wars. Yes, he did. Um, and of course, Pult. What is going on? Poltergeist. Poltergeist. The, um, I'm having some video issues. I'm not sure what's going it's on. It's a movie um, that kind of disturbed me. It's still yeah. recording. Anyway, uh, yeah, Poltergeist. Did you, did you guys? Did that one make it out of the '80s for you guys? Uh, you, yeah. I, yes. Were you exposed I, to yes. It? I saw uh, it at AMC when I was <laughs> seven years old. Nice. <laughs> My <laughs> parents like, rented that movie, oh, and God. I just happened to sit there and watch it with them, and they were like, "Okay, but it's scary." And I'm like, "It's, it's probably not that scary." It sure the heck was. I just I remember um, being a teenager. The only part that was just kind of creepy, and it wasn't because of the gore, because Lord knows I watched far gorier things. Yeah, it was just the intensity of the scene is when he starts ripping. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. He starts just, peeling his like face off. Yeah, his oh like, gosh. And, yeah, and, and then like later on, he pukes out that thing. Yeah. Like, like, and at the same time, I think I saw the fly around the same time. And uh, the fly uh, is an objectively more gorier film, but Poltergeist, yeah. it's like way more intense. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna get into. The whole part where they're like, the house is possessed? Cool. Like, oh, no, get out of the house. Yeah. Like, that was Poltergeist. Yeah, that was Poltergeist. Yeah. yeah. Where they were like, ooh, cool, look at this. If we put the baby here, the ghost moves the baby. Uh, yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? What get you out of the house. Yeah, we'll put the baby there. Yeah. there. What if it kills living things in that space? What if it right. killed that baby? Yeah. How are you going to explain that to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> we put it on the floor. The ghost, the ghost obviously shredded the baby. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good old poltergeist. It just seems stupid to have that whole scene like, ooh, cool, we're haunted. It, it just seemed like a, I, I don't know. The whole thing made them look dumb, I guess. <laughs> well, I think they were also technically like Southern California, so they were, they didn't really buy into a lot of it. They weren't superstitious. 
Like to them, it was fascinating. Oh there, yeah. There was more of a sense of oh, what's going on? And it turns out they were being manipulated by an evil spirit presence yeah. <laughs> trying to sort of kidnap ghosts for its own use, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and All of right. course, I mean, that, still a great movie. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what's more interesting about that movie is. Uh, like all the behind the scenes, like legends and stuff, how most of the cast is like dead or has died. Yeah. Mysterious. Well, not mysterious. Not mysteriously, the but like. Are still around. Yeah. Um, the daughter, she actually, her boyfriend killed her. Her boyfriend killed her, yeah. Which is Griffin Dunn's sister. Who Griffin Dunn's the best friend that gets killed in the beginning of American Orphan in London. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, that's his sister in real life. Or was a sister. Oh, oh he's still around. <laughs> I'm most um, of the kid. Well, all the kids are dead, aren't they? I don't know about the younger. I know the. I know the. I know the, I know the older sister died. She died. Fil- yeah, and then the younger sister died filming Poltergeist Three. I guess. Mm. Um, they, she kept getting misdiagnosed, and she doesn't look well in that movie. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, I know the little. The Craig little T. Nelson shaman and, lady died not that long. Yeah, ago. well, she. Yeah. I mean, she, she was, was also old. she was a small person, and they have a, they tend to have a lot of health problems anyway. Yeah. She was no kid when she made that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I know Craig T. Nelson's still around. Yeah. I mean, he's Mr. Incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Come on, the coach? Yeah, he was coach. That's right. Yeah, for a long time in the 90s. All right. So also that year. Who, oh, by Tra- the way, his star player was Patrick Starr. Oh, that's in that no, show. That was his assistant coach. I think. Oh, the assist. I'm sorry, the assistant coach. Right, the big goofy the guy. The big goofy guy. Or, the no, coach. The, the assistant coach was Dick Van Dyke's brother, which I can't think of his name now. But I think one of his assistants was was Patrick Starr. Yeah. Patrick Starr. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, so also Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, and now Khan. what you don't realize is at that point in time, Star Trek was kind of dead again. Hmm. Not because the show wasn't popular. I think the original show was as popular as it was in the 70s because the show really found its own following years after it was on the air. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But the first movie just, there was a lot of problems with the first movie. The motion Um, picture? Yeah, the motion picture. Um, When it came out, it was famously unfinished. Um, I could kind of see that. Yeah. um, There was a lot of, he didn't, I don't think he got the final edit, Robert Weiss. Oh. And... Because of that, they tacked on a lot of scenes just because I'm not even sure why. Yeah, mm. like how there's an ex- like a long scene <laughs> yeah. of them just looking at the ship, like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Like it just goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, far too long. And the, and the theme um, song So, plays. you know, at that point, Star Trek was kind of dead's probably not the right word, but it was pretty much gone. Right. Like we didn't think we were going to see Star Trek again. And then Wrath of, two, Wrath of Khan comes out, and it's just like, oh, <laughs> the movie was amazing. Yep. And um, it sort of put Star Trek back in the map. And I think that's a focal point for everything that happened after good and bad. I think sure. most people, if you <laughs> talk about them, if they're not like Trekkies yeah. or Trekkers or whatever they want to be called, yeah. like they they know Wrath of Khan. Yeah. Yes. And um, the one thing that tr- even Trekkies and Trekkers don't want to admit is Wrath of Khan is not a science fiction film. No. Oh, no, um, no. Star Trek is primarily, I'm not even going to talk about the new stuff because I don't think it's science fiction. <laughs> no. But no. Star Trek at its core. Dude, it's and, a CW and, and, melodrama in space. Yeah. And most of the movies are, are science fiction films yeah. yep. that use action as a way to tell a science fiction story. The cer- old show certainly was, and the newer show, or the shows from the 80s and 90s certainly were. Mm-hmm. But Star Trek Wrath of Khan is an action film that uses science fiction to tell its story. Yep. So it worked. Mm-hmm. You know, it worked. It put Star Trek back in the map. I mean, if you think about what other movies were coming out then, it, it would have made sense to yeah. make that like some sort of action-packed yeah. movie of some kind. Um, they got a good, they got a, you know, a director that's not known for much, but mm. he, you know, and a lot of people say this, you know, what say what you will about William Shatner, he figured out how to make William Shatner give one of his best performances in anything. Yep. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> you know, the biggest problem with, my understanding is the biggest problem with William Shatner is he's kind of a veteran and he thinks he kind of knows... Mm knows what to do all the time and is not willing to necessarily follow a director. The, o- the only person right. in William... But that guy figured out how to get the best out of him, yeah. The only person in William Shatner's way is William Shatner. It's William Shatner, that's exactly right, um, yeah. Um, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that one really put, you know, Star Trek back in the map. And then, of course, Tron, which um, groundbreaking in a lot of ways. Yeah. Light cycles. Personally, I love the light cycles. I loved as it a as kid. a kid. Yeah, I watched it as an adult and realized it's not a very good movie. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely. But it's cool. <laughs> it's definitely. If you're gonna watch, it, it's more of a nostalgia thing. Yeah. I think I enjoy the nostalgia of watching it again more than the actual movie. Right. And like All I would right. turn it off and was like, <laughs> movie's not very good, but. Gosh, if it didn't bring back those memories of when I had fun watching right. it as a kid. All right, so my introduction was Toronto's Legacy, and then obviously I went back and saw the 82 movie, 
And I was just always more weirded out than amazed. <laughs> like, there was the game with the ball hands. I'm like, what the hell? And, yeah. and friggin', like, when Flynn crashes the ship, and, like, you see some of the pedestrians walking around, there's a guy covered in pool noodles. I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's, yeah. And honestly, a lot of it, it wasn't really CGI heavy. <laughs> no. Um, I get, my understanding is the first use of actual CGI in a film is Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, not even Tron. Um, and it's the scene where they show the Genesis device, the little oh. the video where the Genesis hits and it transforms the planet. That's yeah. my understanding. I know Tron, you CGI, but actually it's pretty limited compared to the type of film it supposedly is. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, um, and then Tootsie came out that year, which, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys even know what that movie I, is. I, so. I, yes. But I know that movie was effing huge in the 80s. I didn't care for it, I, but that movie was huge. I saw, I saw Tootsie... Years and years ago, knowing what it was already, yeah. uh, I think the 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 um, the girl I was dating at the time really liked that movie for some reason, and she made me watch it. And I was like, "It's not a bad movie. It's no, pretty no, enjoyable. Yeah. It's not a movie I would choose to sit down and watch." Right. But having watched it, it's not a bad movie. Not a bad movie at all. Yeah. I could see why people really liked it. I could see why it has that sort of, you know, like. I don't know, top tier sort of shelving that it's been given. It's it's not a bad movie. Right. It's not my kind of movie, right. but it's not a bad movie. And then of course, um, one guy who really knew how to take risks and just push certain kind of effects to the limit was Jim Henson, and of course, The Dark Crystal, which the we Dark talked Crystal. About. And I love that movie, not because again, it it's it can be a bit slow, yeah, especially by today's standards, but it's just so fascinating and different. Yep, and that's why I appreciate it. It's well, just so different than anything it, that came there's out. There's no, at the time. there's not really anything dated about it per yeah. se, compared and, and to something like The Labyrinth, where yeah. you watch Labyrinth, it's like, yeah, yeah, some of the humor here is a bit dated. That's still a great movie, though. Yeah. I still love Labyrinth, but like, like it's like you're saying, right? Like it moved at a slow pace. I think, I think the thing with that movie, and I might be wrong, but here's my take on why it yeah. seemed like it was so slow. I think that movie gave you a lot of time to sort of breathe and take in. Which you need everything cause, in cause that world. Because there is world. nothing about that place that feels remotely like any yeah. planet we know. Yeah, yep. just yeah. just like <laughs> it's not Middle just, Earth. Just visually, <laughs> yep. the entire movie is gorgeous. Yeah. Like the puppets yeah. look great. The, yeah. the, the the world looks great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's what the slow pace is. So you yeah. can sort of take in this weird new True. world. True. Um, I might be wrong. <laughs> I might not have been what he's going for at all. And that's just how it happened. Right. But right. like that's what I feel and, is great about that movie. And then of course, 1982 also. Really, not that Sylvester Stallone wasn't already a breakout star, but he had two movies come out that year: Rocky Three. Rocky Three. Um, that really was started to cement Sylvester Stallone as an actual force to be reckoned with in Hollywood. Um, Rocky Three, of course, is as much as I love Rocky, <laughs> the first movie. I think Rocky Three is a personal favorite, probably because I was what was I thirteen when I saw it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the age. To what see what, a what, movie, what, what was I mean? it about that movie that like struck such just, a chord like, with you? Mr. T was effing scary. Like he seemed like a real dude that was going to just destroy Rocky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> my prediction pain. Pain. Yeah. Um, I love that line. Yeah, it's so the, 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 so the, weirdly um, dumb. Hulk Hogan's in that movie too. Yeah, Thunderlips. Thunder 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 Thunderlips, the ultimate meal. Yep. Um god, it's so annoying. My um, favorite four, but it's yeah. awesome too. Um yeah, and just I think it was the idea that uh you know, it was the idea that you know, everything comes to one point in that movie, and I think that's why it's so good. Everything he does, everything Apollo Creed does for him, and you get to that one point on the beach where Apollo's just like, what's wrong with you, man? And then, you know, Rocky sort of breaks down to his wife, and it's just like it's everything is right there. Mm -hmm. You're like, And then once he gets past that point, of course, then he can't lose. But This is yeah, a triumph. It's just, yeah, it's just, the best training montage. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. It's mm -hmm. just a fantastic movie. Like um, him, like a Sylvester Stallone and a Carl Weathers just running in the beach. Yeah. Da, yeah, yeah. Da, yeah. I yeah. think those movies do a lot for, like, sort of maybe, like, pepping you up. You know what I mean? Because oh, here's yeah. this guy. Well, here's a whole here's, Eddie Murphy bit about that. Yeah, here's 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 Rocky. Well, kind of you this, just saw Rocky, pal. Yeah, <laughs> this kind of down and out kind of schlub guy who's like given this opportunity. It's kind of what you want. You want to yeah. be given the opportunity to sort of shine and prove to people that yeah. you can do whatever it is that you want to do or that you can you can do, but maybe aren't acknowledged for. Like it it, it yeah. it's like wish fulfillment. Which, in retrospect, and this is a little off topic, but that's why I thought Creed Two wasn't as good. No, as Creed. Creed One was. Great. Creed yeah. two, unfortunately, I had a better feel for what yeah. 
what uh, what was I? What was Ivan's son's name? Victor. I had a better feel yeah. for what Victor was going through than Creed. Like, Creed, oh, it just yeah. I never felt like I was allowed inside Creed said. Like, right. it, it just everything. It was weird compared to the first. Like Creed the, too. Yeah. It's like you. It's like you understood Victor. Oh but yeah. you never really understood like Creed's motivation in that movie. You're like, I, I right. think, it was so disappointing. Like, yeah, I mean, I, you'd think they would have like focused on him yeah. a lot more again. It was weird. But maybe they thought because they f- focused, like, you already know who Creed is because you saw the first movie, yeah. so you don't need to do. But he has, but you kind of do. Go, if yeah. he has to go through an arc like Rocky, at least yeah, let us a, understand the yeah. arc. It was yeah, never and he has a kid very now and all that. Yeah, it was never made very clear. Dude, the last, well, anyway. <laughs> the last. Can I just say real yeah, quick, yeah. the last fifteen minutes of that movie makes me cry. Yeah, Victor. The whole, I, the no, Victor, no, no, no. Honestly, the of, Victor thing of the first amazing. Creed movie. Yeah, the first Creed movie. The, was the, great. Like the Fantastic, last fifteen yeah. minutes with the, with his his last fight. Like I always tear oh, yeah. up. Yeah, like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's so good. He's Michael B. Jordan is fantastic yeah. in that movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not eighties. That's a we'll, much better director too. Uh, uh, his name's escaping me now, but he's really good. Um, All right. Yeah. I think I think we've gone on about modern anyway, yeah, movies yeah, yeah. already. Anyway, yeah. So Pink Floyd, the Wall, which I you guys may not be familiar with that. At I know all. the song. It's I have not watched that. No, that movie but was I know the pretty song. Pretty much, you're talking about MTV was just starting out and it was huge, and then you get a movie that's a big music video, and it was just like so amazing. Anyway, so yeah, we won't we won't go any further on that since you guys really don't know about that. Creep Show, of course, classic. Love Creep classic. Show. Yeah. Such George a George Romero, Stephen King, Tom Savini. Yeah, just mm. yeah, it's just a, it's a cavalcade of yeah. horror. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Victor Victoria, which I know you guys don't know anything about, but Julie Andrews, Ju- uh, Julie Andrews. Yeah. I love Julie Andrews yeah, though. I know she a lot was about Julie Andrews. in that Andrews. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a big deal back then, yeah. Oh, man, that, wow, that is, uh, what is the movie called? <laughs> Victor Victoria. No, you guys, like, um, you have no idea. I have I have a, I have a crush on Julie Andrews since uh, Mary Poppins. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Mary was that Pop- in 82? Can we talk about Mary Poppins? <laughs> no. Uh, wait, dang. Wait, what, Julie Andrews as in Mary Poppins? Yes. Julie yeah. Andrews was Mary Poppins. The original yeah. Mary Poppins, What, what, what yeah. movie is this? Victor Victoria. I'm gonna get my phone and look this up. It's not right now. Yeah, 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 sit down, Tony. I'm gonna look at it too. I'll send you. I'll send you. I'll email it. Of course, the Beastmaster. We already talked about Secret of Nim, which, to be honest, and it's kind of it kind of bums me out a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with the Secret of Nim, but Don Bluth. There, you know, there was only in the '70s, and this is going into the '80s. There was only Don Bluth, I believe, famously sort of walked away from Walt Disney, Disney. right? Yeah. Because um, Disney wasn't doing anything. They weren't doing nothing, and the only guy that was doing animation in the 70s and early 80s was friggin' uh, Ralph Bakshi. He was like the only guy. Well, I know and, I know he and was famously he couldn't he almost never was allowed to finish. They always slashed his budgets or something would always yeah. happen. That's oh, why yeah. Lord of the Rings is really strange. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and like, of yeah, weird some, like yeah. F- uh, Fritz the Cat is edited yeah, yeah. in an odd way than yeah. you would normally mm-hmm. see in an animated feature. Um and then, you know, well, Don Bluth comes along because he's a Disney guy and he makes Secret of Nim. <laughs> Well, I, I know that he was. Um, I know that there was like a lot of turmoil by that point. Like a lot of the old Disney guard was yeah. very resistant to like the new, the new right. like generation of animators, which right. Don Bluth was part of, and yeah. he ended up getting frustrated and kind of splintering off on his own. Right. And he made a lot of great stuff. I he love did. Don yeah. Bluth, man. Like, yeah. uh, like I grew up watching. Yeah. Um, Secret of uh, Nam, Secret of American, Nam, American Tale. Yeah. Um, mm. There's more that is a land, land before time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, Dragon's Lair, Space Ace was yeah. all him too. Oh, yeah. but those sure, are yeah. those are games, but like God bless it. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, no, I mean just he's he's definitely like one of those like powerhouse animators that should be given a lot more credit. Yeah. Um or happen again here. By the way, if you get Dragon's Lair in a PlayStation store. <laughs> yeah, I had it up. The only way oh, I really? beat that game was on my phone, but that's because I had li- unlimited continues. <laughs> This is the only way to beat that game. I could not beat that game in well, the arcade. We're going a little long, though. But, um, you know, we, we just talked about some of the movies that you guys know of, and, and the whole point was to sort of show how those movies lived beyond 1982. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can tell you, we are running long, or we're starting to run long, but I just want to wrap up. I, I mean, I can tell you firsthand, I mean, it was such a big part of my life going to the movies because, you know, we didn't really... I mean, video games existed, but they were more in arcades. They certainly weren't at home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there were home systems, but and, not like there are now. <laughs> and narratives um, in video games weren't as big oh, as yeah, they are yeah. now. Um, 
you know, a lot of times me and my friends, we would take a bus or either get dropped off at a movie theater and we'd just spend all day there. <laughs> on weekends, it kept us out of trouble, you know? Yeah. And um, so the theater, these movies were big to me and it's it's really cool to see them exist beyond that year yeah. or those few years because it was just amazing. It just was magical, you know? Yeah. And um, God, it just... It's a yeah. testament <laughs> to the quality of these movies yeah. in like every way. And it just, um, the storytelling and like the, just the act, everything yeah. in, in it just made these movies so good that you can't, you can't really forget about them even years later. Yeah, yeah. And it's even sad that now it's like you see movies that come out and it's just, I don't know, you just see one thing after the other just recycled and, and really there hasn't been a lot of exciting movies. And I think Marvel probably came the close there for a while in the early teens mm-hmm. when they were just almost every movie was gold. And then somewhere along the line, they just kind of not, <laughs> you know, they started to stumble, I the think, Iron with Man the later formula. ones. Yeah. Um, they started to, stu- yeah, the, the, and just, uh, anyway, um, going beyond the scope so. of this episode. But yeah, yeah, it's just, it's great for me to see some of these movies live on. And it's great, because I remember being a kid thinking the thing was just, like, just <laughs> mind-blowing. Yeah. I, mean, I probably saw it on video. I either video or cable, mm. and I would pro- and I know I rented it a lot. It was one of those movies I would rent like every other week. I saw that, and like Evil Dead Two and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it, it was in, it was screening in Galaxy Theaters, and I had oh, to watch nice. it. Nice. I don't think I've ever seen it in theaters. Me but either. I know that the the movie theaters screen a lot of like movies from the eighties every once in a oh, while. Wow. So we should probably do that. Yeah, especially Not that movie for the theater thing. We did. Yeah. We saw Halloween. Yeah, that was we saw cool. Halloween. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, I just remember loving that movie, and then I, you know. When I was in the military, and then I just, for a few years, I just sort of didn't see a lot of these movies. You know what I mean? And then they sort of fall by the wayside. And then I remember, I want to say it came out in DVD in the early 2000s when they had that The Thing game that came out. Which, oh, yeah. Which was not very good. Well, John Carpenter um, himself as a character, yeah. he's a bad guy. <laughs> right, yeah. There's a Thing game? For yeah. what? It had promise. It just wasn't very good. It yeah. was PlayStation 2? Ba- oh, boy. Oh, yeah, it was PS2, and basically the system w- in the game would be that everyone would be distrustful of each other, and you have to, like, gain their trust by sometimes giving more weapons or giving more ammo. Yeah. And then, but every once in a while, you have to, like, test each other for... But the problem the, was, no matter how careful you were watching your teammates, they all ended up as things, too. Yeah, so that's the unfortunate dumb. part. Yeah, it was kind of mm. dumb. There was no... It wasn't the best game. But I think with that came, like, a free DVD copy of The Thing. And I just remember thinking, like, it was one of those things where I'm like, do I want to watch it again? Because I have such a great memory of it. I don't want to ruin it. And then it. I you watched it again. It. I was like, oh, this movie. Oh, it's my so God. Great. It's still yeah, just as great. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so. And with the video game Among Us getting popular, I showed my little sister. Right? Yeah. I showed my little Among sister Us, the yeah. thing m- movie. And, she w- and like, as a new as someone who's seen the movie first time, she's like, I think it's this person. Oh, I think it's that person. So <laughs> yeah, it was cool nice, to see that. Nice. And there's a lot of theories about the thing. We could, honestly, we'd have an whole episode about that. <laughs> oh I mean, yeah, I, was, I wouldn't mind the that. Coat. Yeah. Well, I watched the thing. Keith all David's over coat. Again. The coat. Yeah, Keith David's coat. That's right. All right, um, all right yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. If there's probably... anything that we didn't mention from 1982, or maybe something right. we didn't talk about, we're more than. I mean, and there was a lot of big movies that I did not cover because more, it was more about what you know, you guys not being around then. Because I a lot of those movies I knew were huge, but that mm-hmm. doesn't you know. Yeah. I mm-hmm. wanted to see what you guys were exposed to and. You know the movies that made it past that, but anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything, right. every, all of those movies were all rentals for us when I was a kid. We yeah. didn't go to the movie theater a lot when I was really young. Yeah. Um. So we made do with getting vi- movies, and I'm I'm grateful. That's where I saw a lot of those movies. So, you know, yeah. I'm I'm not mad about it. Um. So probably got to jump on Fathom Events or AMC and see if they're gonna see what old movies are gonna screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if there's anything that we didn't talk about that yeah. you would have wanted us to talk about, or if you just want to mention movies that came out then that we didn't right. talk about, please feel free to mention in the comments. Yeah. And, comments, you know, yeah. we'll try to respond if we can. I Absolutely, mean, yeah. Matter of fact, that we actually got a comment, which I was very, I thought that was great, and I need to respond to that gentleman because that was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was a very nice comment. Um, anyway, yeah, that's it. Anything else? Any plugs before we get out of here? Plugs. Recommendations, plugs. Okay. Uh, so I'm a PS5 owner. Yay. And I... Are you saying it like you're an alcoholic? Kind of. Hi, I'm Tony, and I'm a PS5 <laughs> owner. Hey, Tony. <laughs> hey, Tony. Final Fantasy VII Remake has the intergrade upgrade, which upgrades the graphics, and it nice. comes with the intermission DLC, which you play as Yuffie, and you fight a couple bad guys from spinoff games, and yeah, it's, oh, it's nice. fun. Oh, Final Fantasy VII. Right? Yep, the, seven, okay, yeah. cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I recommend, and I watched it this week, uh, and the Edgar Wright documentary of The Sparks. 
What? It is. I love fanta- Edgar Wright. I'll watch it. Dude. Oh. Dude, uh, the he, Sparks. The Sparks. Yeah, like there was like they were like a band from like this like the seventies and eighties, and apparently they were like, they were like the foundation for like modern day like dun, sort of dun, pop dun, music. Dun, They're dun, very dun. influential. I had no idea kinda these guys. Kind of like, like the ex- Pixies were so influential on grunge, but most people don't know who the yeah, Pixies are. Yeah, but like yeah. I know who the Pixies are. Like I have never heard of Sparks. I have uh, never heard of Sparks. I don't have to check it out until I saw this movie. And and these Edgar guys Wright, are cool. Yeah. And Edgar Wright uh, yeah. d- uh, directed the film. The it, best. One of the best action directors ever, and he's just so oh, he's so good. Under, he's so good. It's I, unfair. Yeah. All yeah. his movies are great. I can't name one bad Edgar Wright yeah. movie that I've yeah. seen. Um, but yeah, it's a it's it's like two hours, but it's a documentary. But man, is it good? Yeah. And man, is it really good? Like you gain like a really big appreciation for these guys if you've never heard of them. Like yes. obviously you know who they are. Yes. Great. I didn't know who they were, and I think these are like the coolest dudes I've ever seen in my entire life. It's really weird. Nice. Um, but it's a great film. Uh, it's it's out now, so go cool. go to a theater yeah. if you want to go to a movie theater and go watch it. It's really good. I highly okay. recommend it. Um, I am current. I'm currently playing my PS4 Pro like an animal because I don't have a PS5. Like an animal. Um, I just got a PS4. Am I late to the party? <laughs> You're yes. very late. Oh. I am playing a game called Biohazard, which is a very fun game. Um, I won't say it's a great game, and what I mean by that is... It it Resident, isn't it Resident Evil? It doesn't... No, no I'm not... No. I, I've seen gameplay. Oh, did I say Biohazard? You said Biohazard. Biomutant. Yeah, it's... Oh, I'm sorry. okay. Bio Biohazard is the Japanese name for Resident right. Evil. Yeah. Yeah. It's also so Resident I was like, Evil ooh. Resident Evil 7 was also called Biohazard. I thought you were being fancy, like, no. oh, I don't play Resident Evil. I played Biohazard, <laughs> no, no. so... My mistake, Biomutant. Um, Biomutant is like a... It's like a, it's like a kid's game that's not made for kids. <laughs> Oh, okay. It has like a lot of cute I've seen scary the trailers monsters. for it. Yeah. So like I don't think it's a kids movie it's, or it's no, a kids game. It's fun though. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. Um but anyway, that's all I'm doing. And of course, uh you want to check out some funky cool t shirts, T Public slash Go Fenris. Um some cool Godzilla Star Trek. Yeah, there's some like shirts, cool so. very insider-y shirt. Yeah. You don't even have to know what it means. As long as right. nobody else knows what it means, you just pretend like you do. Like, right. oh you don't know what that's from? I'm wearing I'm it explain. ironically. I'm not going to explain to you what that means. Right. So. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you want to see another uh, show I'm in, just yeah, check yeah. out Toku Titan Cast. There it's you go. on the YouTube channel. Hell yeah. Belongs to Titan Goji. And yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys. All right, All right guys. We will see you hopefully next week where we will talk That's about more stuff. Yes. Actually, actually we next week. A- Next week, we're going to have ourselves a little competition, a little head-to-head, a little Godzilla stand versus Godzilla stand. We're going to have trivia for for these two Godzilla experts right here Mm -hmm. to see who is the king of the king of the monsters. I like that. King of the king of the monsters. All right, guys. uh, So if that interests you, please tune in next week, and we will see you then. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.